All right. How's everybody doing? Doing good? And seeing some good talks? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. You doing okay out there? There, there we go. All right, so welcome to the Underground Theater here at API Days Paris. We got an exciting talk coming up by the API Handyman called the API Designer Viewer Starter Set. So I'll let you take it away, Arnaud. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Arnaud Loré. I'm a senior APR architect at Natixis. It's a French banking group. Uh, so as Tony said, uh, some may know me as the API Handyman. You can follow me on Twitter, read my blog. Uh, I did not write, uh, write uh, so much blog posts until recently because I was spending most of my free time writing a book called The Design of Web APIs. And uh, hopefully it's over now and I can get back to a normal life and talk about API design reviews today. So a part of my job at Natixis is uh, helping people to design APIs. I work with different teams across different business lines uh, on the creation and evolution of dozens of APIs, mostly private ones. I work with total beginners, more experienced people, and everything in between. In that context, I had to conduct quite a few API design reviews, and today with the API design review was status set, uh, I would like to share with you a few things I learned, hoping that they will help you when reviewing APIs or designing them, and also when building API governance. Dungeons and Dragons, or D&D, is a tabletop fantasy role-playing game. During a game, one of the players acts as the dungeon master, or the DM, and the DM is the game referee and the storyteller. The other players play characters involved in a story created by the DM. Um, players, when they play D&D, they can do almost everything that comes to their mind. For example, they may try to convince a dragon to not eat them. Uh, when they try to do that, the dungeon master may ask them to throw some dice uh, to do a persuasion check to see if they succeed to not be eaten by the dragon. Uh, when you do API design review, you may have to convince people. Indeed, a question that usually comes when doing such reviews is, why do we need API design reviews? Even if it is said like, Oh yes, is that led yet another useless process? That's a very good question. Indeed, why do we need to review APIs when designing them is so simple? We are only using HTTP. We have design guidelines, we are expert developers, we know uh, the functional, we know the business. Let me tell you a story to answer that question. Now that what follows is purely fictitious and has never, ever happened in any of the company I've been working with. Well, it may have happened, but not exactly like this. Let me introduce you to Donan, the designer, and Rina, the reviewer. Donan is a level two API designer, and Rina is a multi-class character, which is both a level five API design, uh, API design reviewer and level 23 API designer. I will now reenact an API design review that never happened. Greetings, Rina. Greetings, Donan. As you know, we need to add a post and email operation to our API. This operation is so simple, but we wonder why we need to review it. Well, you know, this is for the good of our kingdom and its people. We would like to ensure all, that all of our APIs make sense, our free design bugs are extensible and user-friendly. We also take advantage of these reviews to uh, enhance uh, our people uh, design skills. But rest assured that I am not the API Design Inquisition. I'm here to help you. And this review will probably not take a long time as you already sent me your API scroll. Great, so what do you think about it? From a pure form perspective, that looks quite good. You follow our guidelines almost perfectly. Names like sender or receiver are quite clear. You define required data. The use of the HTTP protocol is okay. And you use our standard error responses. 
The only thing that you would need to change is the path, send email. Uh, according to our guidelines, we do not use verb in path, only nouns. I would suggest a post slash emails request that tells that you create an email. Uh, if it is not clear, we can go through our guidelines to uh, explain that point. By Moradin, that's good news. We'll do the modification and start coding. Wait. Form is not all. Your API scroll did not contain any information about the why and the how uh, of this post send email operation. Can you tell me more? Oh, that's quite simple. When users modified their data on the mobile application, we need to notify them that their data has been modified, you know, for our security. Okay, so this looks like some low level uh, technical operation which will be called by your mobile backend, right? Not at all. Once the modify user uh, operation has been called, the mobile application calls the new send email operation. So if my understanding is correct, that means that the consumer is in charge of what seems to be purely internal security business logic, and also that everyone getting access to this API could send an email with any content to anyone on the, on the company's behalf. By Moradin, you're right. I'm glad we did this review. I need to rethink my plan. This story is a good example of why we need API design reviews. But this is only a, an example. What else could, be, could possibly go wrong when designing APIs? Well, almost everything. Uh, API design can be inconsistent, non-conforming to guidelines, bugged, incomplete, non-user friendly, unsecure, and may even uh, not fulfill the real needs. These are the com most common reasons why we need API design reviews. And API design reviewers aim to help designers avoid all these problems. This purely fictitious example gave us a glimpse of what happens during an API design review. Let's see more by discovering four basic rules that should be followed when conducting an API design review. Rule number one, in a DND game, what is important is not saving the kingdom from some dragon, but the story the party will leave, the action they will achieve to uh, uh, succeed uh, fighting the dragon. An API design review is not a one-stop journey. It must follow a complete life cycle in order to be efficient. An ideal API design review starts with an early review where the people in charge of creating the API discuss with the reviewer about their needs and their plan to fulfill them. At this moment, uh, we need to ensure that the team goes into the right direction. For such a review, we don't need a detailed API contract. What we need is an overview of the context, the needs, uh, the functional needs, and some idea about the API operations that will be uh, created to fulfill these needs and how they will be used. In our sandy email use case, such early review would have probably quickly showed that the direction taken was not a good one. After this review, the API is actually designed and then sent to the reviewer for the code review. At this stage, the reviewer works alone. The objective is to go through all aspects of the API in depth, to spot possible errors, problems, and uncertainty. Such detailed analysis must not be done live. It requires concentration and time for thinking. The API design reviewers list all questions and remarks and send them to the API creators in order to prepare the live review. Not that if everything is perfect, the review can end here. During the live review, reviewer and designer go through all questions and remarks and agree on the modifications to do or not to do on the design. Once that is done, the API description is updated and resent to the API reviewer for a final check. The review can end here if the uh, contract is live updated. And the live review can also be a simple email if there are only some uh, few uh, things to fix and no, fi no, no need to discuss them. Be warned that sometimes you will need more than one called live cycle. And also don't forget to explain the process because if you don't do that, you may never see again the API team after your first meeting. They could think that they have everything they, they need. Rule number two, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, you know the importance of exploration. 
a party must check every corner of a dungeon to uh, be sure to find all treasures, but also traps. And when reviewing an API design, and especially during the code review, you also have to uh, be the most exhaustive possible. Every aspect of the API, the API must be scrutinized in order to be sure that everything is okay. You must ensure that the API makes sense for its users and is user-friendly. Uh, to do so, you must have a good view of the uh, context, the targeted users, uh, the needs. But it's mandatory to check if the API's purpose, uh, its operation, the requested and provided data are actually an accurate solution. You also have to check at every level that everything makes sense for anyone willing to use the API. That includes uh, operations purpose, uh, operations flows, namings, types, formats required, and optional data in parameters, but also responses, error handling, and even descriptions. To check also that the API conforms to your guideline and is consistent, you also have to explore every level from operation to property and everything in between. Uh, it's extremely hard to uh, especially check that every single part of the API is consistent with all of the parts. Always double check for security aspects. Do the API deals with sensitive data? What the API allows to do or access to is relevant regarding the targeted consumers. How the API is secure is adapted to the context. And do not forget to check if there are any limitations impacting the design that has been forgotten. It could be because the targeted consumers are on a hostile network environment like mobile applications or have technical limitations. There may also uh, be technical limitation or functional one on the implementation sides that should be taken into account on the design. Rule number three, social interactions. They play a very important role in the D&D games. It's the same for API design reviews. During early review and live review, you will have to make the API creators talk a lot. You'll have to ask questions, make comments, uh, and carefully listen to what they say. That will help you to understand the context, the needs. It will also help you to identify vocabulary, data types, concepts, processes. All this information are critical because you need them to evaluate if the design is accurate. For example, people may use different nouns in a design for what seems a single concept. Questioning and making them talk about it uh, may help to find if this is a mistake or not. Very important when you make people talk, you may have to guide them to focus on the higher perspective. During our review, I've seen people directly talking about database, columns, tables, without explaining context and even what they want to do. If it is the case, stop them gently and ask them to explain the who's, the why's and the how from a functional perspective. And last rule, but not the least, you must adopt the right mindset to do API design reviews. In an if an API design reviewer was a Dungeon and Dragons character, its alignment would be neutral good. Let's see what it means. An API reviewer is supposed to explain and teach, absolutely not to shame without any arguments. Always explain your remarks by rephrasing your un understanding of the needs or by reporting to guidelines or common practices or existing APIs. In order to do uh, an accurate review, don't be too smart. Try to impersonate consumers who are not experts in the API's field, even if you know it perfectly. Always trust the API team about their functional knowledge. It's not your API, it's theirs. You're only here to give a hand, so listen to them. And last remark, maybe that you should take it carefully because depending on your context, you may not want to do it my way. I believe that as an API design reviewer, you are not here to do the police and block people. Sometimes, because of whatever reasons, the API team may not be able to follow your recommendation. If that's the case, just explain the consequences and let them judge if that is really a problem. Of course, there is a balance to find in such case to uh, ensure an overall consistency in your company's APIs. D&D is a never-ending game, just like APIs and reviews, and you must be prepared to and do all you can do in order to make this ongoing story as enjoyable as possible for everyone, including you. So here are four rules that you should follow when conducting many API design reviews. Rule number one, proper equipment can mean the difference between life and death in a dungeon or when doing API design reviews. 
So you better fill your toolbox. First of all, write API design guidelines, which describes how APIs should be designed in your organization. Without them, you can be sure that it will be really difficult for you and all API designers to be consistent in design. Promote the use of machine-readable API description formats. For REST APIs, you can use the Open API specification. For asynchronous APIs, you can use the Async API specification. And by the way, that means that all types of APIs should be reused, not only synchronous ones. Uh, using machine-readable uh, API descriptions formats, you can write programs that with lint API designs to check if the forms match your guidelines. Uh, not that such a linter will not be enough to judge the quality of an API, but it's a great help to spot small problems. I started to uh, experimentally lint uh, my open API files using Stoplight Spectral, and I'm having quite good reason. Thanks, Phil. Um, and uh, also thanks to machine-readable API description formats, you can easily provide uh, API design templates and data models. Now that some API designers may not be really happy to write JSON or YAML files uh, to describe their API, so try to find um, friendly design tools. I uh, started to promote the use of another Stoplight tool. I'm not paid by Stoplight. It's called Stoplight Studio, which is a graphical user interface uh, which helps to uh, design APIs, and uh, people are quite happy with it. Rule number two, our memory is not reliable and not easily shared. A good dungeon master records every action in order to uh, use this information late in later games. And an API design reviewer uh, must record everything too. Write down your reviews and so you can share them with uh, the API designers, but also with your fellow API uh, reviewers. It will help to track all problems, check that they have been fixed, and will give you uh, an historical background of uh, the API's evolution. Uh, I did not find any uh, tool to do that, so I, I use a good old wiki. Uh, record all important decisions and why you took them. Uh, especially global decisions should be uh, written in your guidelines. Uh, for example, how to adapt design when consumers are unable to make batch requests. Uh, that's uh, still a thing today. Uh, and finally, store all contracts in a contract repository so you can check if a new API built by your team is consistent with existing one or if it evolved, uh, how did it evolve since its last review. Rule number three, govern, but not too much. A good d, &D uh, dungeon master knows when to apply rules strictly or loosely, just like a good API design reviewer. One of the objectives of making API design review is to ensure that everything is consistent and uh, so on. But don't think that means that all APIs should share very strict and fine-grained design rules, very strict common data schema. In my opinion, you should never govern like a dictator. A loose governance based on high-level rules and friendly review may work well. But again, it's up to you to find the right level of governance depending on your organization. Um, you may build a reviewer community, uh, especially if these members are actual designers. It could help to ensure consistency and make the guidelines evolve smoothly. Uh, but don't come to the idea of having committees reviewing API designs. In my opinion, again, it's a terrible idea because uh, committees go into endless debates and lead to a rigid, time-consuming, uh, and counterproductive governance. I prefer to have single trained and trusted reviewers, uh, and I find it more efficient. But depending on how you work, find your way. Rule number four, train and teach. Your job is not only reviewing API design, your job is making people better at designing APIs. Uh, when I start to work with a team in the early review, I check with them if they need help to design the API. And so if that is the case, I can teach them how to design APIs on a real use case that matter for them. Uh, with my team, we also plan to create an API design training course so people could be trained to design API before working with them. That way we hope to preemptively ensure that people will design good APIs and so we'll have less work on API design reviews. Is it the end already? Not yet. 
At the end, the game is absolutely boring if the dungeon master do all the work and the other players don't do anything. It's the same for reviews. API creators have to actively participate to APIs and reviews. Here are three rules that you should follow when you participate to review. First, do not wait for the last minute before going into production to contact API design reviewers. API design reviewers are not here to give you a badge that uh, you need to go into production. Uh, if, you do, if you think that, do not bother contacting them. But be ready to face the consequences. If it's quite simple to fix an API design that has not been implemented, it, be, it may be far more complicated to change anything once everything has been developed or worse, put into production and used by others. Fixing bad design may even have need to totally rethink an implementation architecture. Bad design may also have serious consequences for your organization. Nobody may want to use your terrible APIs. And things can be even worse if security is involved. Remember the send email story. So I repeat, API design reviewers are here to help you. The sooner you contact them, the better. Rule number two, on each step of the API design review lifecycle, participants must be prepared. Uh, review participants must be able to describe the context, the needs, and how the API will fulfill them. That may mean that a developer, a business analyst, a product owner, and maybe consumers should be involved in the process. Uh, if you provide documentation, please provide user-friendly documentation. Simple diagrams uh, explaining API and code flows are welcome. You can use PlantUML for that. Uh, but awfully long wiki page explaining all the implementation details are not needed. For the code review, please provide a fully documented API contract using the relevant API description format. And in order to avoid everyone losing their time, please pre-check this contract using the guidelines or a linter. And finally, read the call reviews to prepare answers and fix what can be fixed before the live ones. Rule number three, uh, the last one, API creators like uh, reviewers must adopt the right mindset. Don't take it personally. API design reviewers are here to help you. They may ask many questions, they may challenge your design, but it's for your API's good. On your side, never hesitate to ask questions to challenge the API design reviewer. As a reviewer, I have learned a lot by being challenged by designers. And one last thing, never hesitate to propose solution uh, to uh, make your guidelines evolve. Guidelines are made, should be made by you, designers for other designers. And we have gone through all the API design reviewer starter set. I really hope that it will help you. If you should remember just one thing, please remember that API design reviews make everyone grow. API designers, but also API reviewers. Thank you. Hi. Big round of applause for Arnaud. Thank you so much. May all of your API designs be natural 20s. Thank you. All right. Uh, if anybody has one question, we are right up against lunchtime, but, but we can take one. Yes, up front. I can give you the mic. That's great. So uh, I want to know how, um, what is the number of APIs you are reviewing within Notixis and how you scale the API uh, design review role, actually. Are you designing, I mean, uh, are you reviewing all the APIs that are designed within Notixis? Okay, for now, uh, the organization of my, of my team is uh, frankly not scalable. We are only two. And I did probably 150 uh, reviews this year. And so uh, how we'll scale is that we, uh, we have seen that the team we have been working with uh, for a long time are now getting better at designing APIs. So we take less time with them and we can take more time with others. Uh, we also uh, will take advantage of uh, linters. We will provide LinkedIn as a service so people can quickly see if the form of the API is okay. But uh, basically to scale is training people, automate, everything you can automate and uh, let people give, people, give people a frame, large, and give them freedom. If you want to be behind uh, everyone and do the police, 
it will not work. It will not scale. All right. Thank you very much. Another Thank big you. round of applause for the EPI handyman.